I'm always gonna pick the BMW program over Mercedes. I'm not talking about cars. I'm not talking about BMW versus Mercedes in terms of which car is the better car. BMW is always gonna have the better program in my eyes. However, there's a side of this story that you may wanna hear regarding it. What is happening guys? Ari here with Boston Automotive Consulting and as always, this video is brought to you by saveonmyauto.com. Saveonmyauto.com is a resource you can use so that you can shop around for the best possible deal. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing because this whole channel is dedicated to giving you everything you're gonna need to know so that you can negotiate your best possible deal. Now what I'm referring to in particular is BMW not having a dynamic program for each and every model. Mercedes, what they like to do is, depending on how hot a model is, how low the residual is on a particular car, or how high, they'll adjust the whole program for that particular model. If it's a model that they know that their dealers have a lot of, then they'll offer more incentives, they'll drop the money factor down to a very, very competitive rate just to see them move. BMW doesn't operate like that. BMW, for the most part, sets a money factor that it uses across the board. The money factor is your least interest rate. And it, for BMW, most of the time, it doesn't change model by model. For Mercedes, it does. And a lot of that, for me, gets very, very important when we're talking about AMG models or models that you don't really see on the road, like the C-Class. I'm referring to maybe like an E43 or a special model like that. The comparable BMW is gonna share the same rates and residuals as well as rebates and the money factor as a regular three series model or four series model when we're referring to the M of that particular model. BMW is always gonna be a little bit more generous with its loyalty credits. That's what keeps me there. And that's what keeps a lot of its clientele there. And BMW is gonna have a lot lower disposition fee. The reason why in particular I love sticking with BMW over Mercedes is I take an overall cost when I'm calculating out how much are these two leases gonna cost me. The BMW's lease is always gonna include maintenance and on top of that, BMW is always gonna have a lower cents per mile charge when you go over your miles versus Mercedes. BMW is always gonna allow me to build my car and deliver it back to me usually within two months. And in those two months, BMW is gonna allow me to lock in the program for that month. Say it's super, super hot, there's a lot of rebates, the money factor is low, I can fill out a credit application and lock in the program for two months. Mercedes, on the other hand, typically takes about three months with no option to lock in the program. Mercedes is always gonna change the model. They're gonna facelift the model a year and a half or two years into it, making me feel like, you know, maybe I should have waited. Maybe I should have got that one. Maybe I should have just held off. BMW doesn't change their models that often. They don't facelift their models a year and a half into the production cycle. All I'm saying is when faced with the decision, picking the BMW or the Mercedes, it's a very, very hard one to make. However, the thing that keeps me with BMW is consistency and affordability on their higher end models. On their higher end trims, the more desirable ones are just as attainable as their lower end models. I hope that this video did something for you guys that were considering or debating between the BMW or the Mercedes. Has nothing to do with the cars themselves, just the acquisition of them in particular. If you found this information useful, and you wanna see more of these new car buying and negotiation tip type videos, please consider subscribing. And don't forget to visit saveonmyauto.com as well as some of the resources down in the description below. Thank you so, so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.